Well, Brendan has introduced uh, a lot of uh, this material. Uh, just to repeat that on our visit, we met with a couple of think tanks, four gov five government departments, actually, if you include the Prime Minister's office, two political parties, two newspapers, the Central Bank, the Trade Union Confederation, who met us at a very high level, and many in individuals, including, um, including academics. Um, people were remarkably open and frank um, about uh, the situation, and many people we met were very angry for reasons that we can all uh, well uh, understand. Uh, there was a great deal of interest and curiosity about the Irish situation, um, about the Celtic Tiger, about getting out of the crisis. And I suppose there were really two poles to this. There was a, a kind of a naive belief that the Celtic Tiger was a question of silver bullets, that if you had... Uh, low corporation tax, and if you had uh, tax conformity, a uh, big issue in Greece, obviously, and uh, if you had a more liberal labor market than they have in Greece, uh, then um, you would march on to economic uh, prosperity. So that was kind of one end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, and I won't attribute it to any organization, but you can work it out for yourself, uh, there was a sort of belief that Ireland was some kind of a regulatory swamp, that, uh, uh, that we, were, uh, we had a third world attitude uh, to worker protection, to wages, to the environment, etc. Um, so we spent a goodly part of our time dealing with those kind of issues, uh, um, uh, suggesting that the Irish uh, success uh, encapsulated in what we unfortunately <laughs> called the Celtic Tiger it was much deeper, much more long run, um, um, much more um, complex uh, than they thought and that there were no simple uh, lines that could be inserted into a political manifesto that would solve uh, aspects of the Greek situation any more than it could describe the Irish situation. Um, and as Brendan says, we, we, we didn't go there trying, and as Tony intimated, we didn't go there uh, trying to come away as experts in the Greek situation. We went there to try over four days to get an impression of what the reality was, what the underlying factors were, uh, etc., uh, to get, as I say on the slide, a kind of a, a helicopter view uh, of the situation rather than to become experts. Um, Impressions. Well, Greece, just to remind ourselves, has a fiscal crisis, it has a debt crisis, it now has a banking crisis, and on the back of all of that, it's got a social crisis, some of which we saw ourselves manifested on the streets, but in a fairly benign kind of way. But much deeper than the social crisis, than the, what's manifest on the streets, are some of the factors that Tony referred to and that Brendan will deal with about. Um, I mean, we're used to cynicism about the political system here, justified or unjustified, uh, but in Greece it is really deep-seated with a huge anger um, uh, behind it. So there, there is really a, a, a considerable social crisis. And in trying to address all of these uh, issues, um, they've been asked to dismantle or certainly severely contract large parts of their social security system. Now, it doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree with the need for or the justification for, but you have to consider the impact of doing that on the Greek population, who, by and large, reg regard themselves as having some kind of a Greek social model. Um, they are, have been huge, or there are huge reductions in public sector employment, a lot of that employment being uh, rather uh, uh, driven by... Um, by political cronyism, but nonetheless, people are employed in the public sector and now losing their jobs, and in the meantime, losing their wages. There is a big privatization program. Um, the reform, modernization, and liberation of the economy is an enormous uh, task, um, ranging across all the kind of sectors that, uh, that we're being asked to um, make further structural reforms, but uh, they're much more deep-seated in Greece. Uh, labour market changes, um, uh, no doubt necessary, but uh, radical and, and public, public administration reform, taxation reform, and all of, this, all of these changes are being pushed simultaneously uh, by the Troika. Uh, so there is a huge amount of severe pain being inflicted on people for long term and for what the ordinary citizen 
must regard as somewhat uncertain gain. Um, there is a question of the capacity of the Greek system, political, administrative, etc., to reform. I'm not going to go into the, 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 the detail of this because Brendan's going to deal with some of it, but just looking at it from, um, uh, from a, an overall point of view, I don't think we met anybody or any people um, who didn't believe that wide-ranging reform uh, was necessary, even though in the here and now uh, they might be vigorously opposed uh, to much of that uh, reform, or we would think they were. And the historic roots of the, of the problems which they have in the political system, in the economic system, in the administrative system, um, are, as Tony has already said, the historic roots are, are deep. Uh, there are some people who spoke to us who went back to the very early days of Greek independence in 1830. Now, we're capable of doing that kind of thing in Ireland and we know how relevant that kind of analysis is, but that's what people did. But certainly, the aftermath of the, um, of the uh, war with Turkey in the 1920s and the, war with, and the civil war in the 1940s between left and right, these are uh, fairly, these would appear to be quite deep-seated and, uh, uh, and form some of the background uh, to the problems they now uh, have. We found everywhere, and, um, research institutes, advisors to government departments, etc., you know, a, a very impressive intellectual analysis and probably a deeper uh, 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 intellectual analysis that you would get generally in Ireland uh, of the nature of the, of the change that was required. But uh, there was little actual administrative experience of executing change. Uh, so the, they were taking on huge agendas <coughs> with little prioritization and in a situation where it was even more uncertain than it is in this country, that if you pull a lever of administrative change, that anything actually happens uh, at the other end. And we know the difficulties in this country of, of bringing about change. Um, each of the two politi main political parties, PASOK, which is now in government, and New Democracy, which are uh, the previous government, are split or appear to be split between people who do recognize a need for modernization and uh, conservatives. Um, and they have succeeded in combining to a limited extent uh, in parliamentary cooperation on a, a change agenda, uh, spectacularly so in the reform of the university education uh, sector in recent months. Um, that in itself is a whole case study of uh, problems, but suffice to say uh, at the moment, uh, suffice to say they did cooperate in that and have cooperated on a number of uh, other issues, uh, but agreement between them and the depth of uh, certainly the rhetorical differences is, uh, is huge. However, the dividing line between them on many uh, issues um, seems to be that of timing rather than of substance. Uh, it was certainly the point was certainly made to us uh, by one political um, person <laughs> uh, that there had been a history of um, uh, adm uh, administrative change of a sort, which is one we would recognize in Ireland, of uh, creating executive agencies and uh, some decentralization uh, and so on. But that on, a, on change of government and ch governments in Greece uh, since the uh, fall of the colonels in 74, uh, the, the governments in Greece do tend to alternate. Uh, and um, the, the tendency has been to abandon the previous government's changes and then to proceed with a whole new, uh, new uh, uh, set of them. Uh, a theme that came up quite a lot um, was uh, Greece isn't Ireland or Greece is Ireland or Ireland isn't Greece. Um, I mean, this is fairly trite stuff, but I mean, we do have an open, relatively modern economy that's attractive uh, to FDI. Uh, Greece, probably 25, 30 years behind us, 
maybe with the current situation that can be uh, uh, that will be um, truncated somewhat as Roland Manuel has said never never waste a good uh, crisis and hopefully Greece will make use of this uh, crisis to catch up um, in, in our case a banking crisis based on profligate lending led to a fiscal crisis poor bank regulation was a feature of the system whereas in Greece uh, the fiscal crisis led to the banking crisis. They didn't have a banking crisis uh, um, uh, as, as the starting point of their problems. Um, they had banking regulation that was fit for purpose for normal, um, um, uh, in, in normal circumstances uh, until the fiscal and debt crisis um, uh, hit. Mind you, they had a fiscal crisis throughout, just that nobody bothered recognising it. Um, in Ireland, we have a so-so kind of public administration that needs a lot of modernization. In Greece, it's arthritic, it's cronyist, it's clientelist, it's, uh, it's um, uh, under-professionalized, and it just requires absolutely enormous uh, uh, reform. Um, but the big difference is that Ireland, we have an economic engine that can uh, pull us out of the station. <coughs> Um, albeit with, with considerable social pain for an awful lot of people. But we can be dragged out of uh, this mess given reasonable international conditions. Greece has no such engine and is insolvent uh, as a result. Um, and no amount, in my humble view, of financial retrenchment is going to solve the real Greek underlying economic uh, crisis. What is desperately needed is a Marshall Plan for Greece to accompany austerity and write-offs and demands for change, etc. And that Marshall Plan includes both investment and technical assistance. So to conclude, I would hold the view that Greece has been asked to do too much too fast, uh, probably as a result of an inadequate or a politically, what had to be a political ac politically acceptable uh, analysis of the nature of the crisis at the very beginning. Um, su substantial debt write off such as we're seeing, uh, at 50%, it's probably not up to the task, but that's what's achievable, um, will ease the fiscal and hopefully the social pressures, but it won't necessarily create a modern economic engine. And in fact, um, uh, you could see circumstances in which uh, an easing of the fiscal uh, situation could actually slow down a reform process. <coughs> the reform process doesn't need to be slowed down. It needs to be prioritized. It needs to be sequenced, um, but, uh, but not abandoned. Um, and there needs to be a massive investment in, in the uh, productive economy. Um, Greece is a sophisticated society. It, uh, in fact, it's a very sophisticated society. And it was nice after a gap of 20 years to be reminded of that. And it's geographically very well placed um, uh, as a communications hub for um, that part of the world. Um, and it's well placed to develop um, a modern economy. They could do well to emulate some of the things that we've done over the past 30 or 40 years in the education sector and so on, um, particularly in technical education. But nonetheless, this is not a uh, third world country. This is a country with, with uh, great potential um, uh, but it needs, um, it needs help. Thank you very much. <laughs>